Hi, I'm Carmen. I'm a second year PA student at the University of Manitoba. What was first year of PA school like for you? It was, it was enjoyable, it was crazy, it was kind of a whole whirlwind, um, but I really like classrooms so I overall enjoyed it. Um, it was very intense. I think first, first semester was pretty similar to undergrad. The courses we were taking, um, we took like biochem, anatomy, physiology, all studies. We, they were very similar to what you would take in undergrad and the course load I think was similar too. So we weren't quite learning um, medicine yet and diagnoses. But then second semester came on real fast and it was very intense. That's when we started learning adult medicine, um, emergency medicine, and we had pharmacology in there. There was a lot. So that one was probably the most overwhelming semester. Semester three, you're kind of used to how things are working a bit more, what's expected of you, how to study. Uh, so while we were still taking the same course load and it was still very intense topics, I think you're just a little bit more used to it at that point, so it's not as overwhelming, I found. And how is learning medicine different than learning in undergrad? It's not just memorization, which was hard to kind of grasp for the first adult med exam we had. So it's you really have to understand the concepts and be able to think about it in a different way so it's not just here's the question and here's the answer it's like here's the question and you have to go through a bunch of steps to get an answer that you may not have been taught in this exact course but it correlates through other courses it's very um, very broad thinking yes yeah how much time are you spending in the classroom is it more eight to five or a little bit more scattered uh, yeah our classes were eight to five um, pretty well every day we had an hour lunch break scheduled we often went overtime in all of our classes, so our lunch was always cut short, and we were always kind of stretched at the end of the day as well for time. Uh, so it was a very heavy workload day. So first semester um, was pretty much all didactic except for our anatomy labs. We had that once a week, I think, in the afternoons, um, which was a nice break from the classroom. Uh, we also had patient assessment, which I guess was hands-on as well. Uh, second semester, um, our only hands-on learning was patient assessment and then third semester we got procedure labs which were really fun uh, doing suturing and all that sort of fun stuff so we got a lot more hands-on learning in um, third semester and then we also had the early exposures where we got to go out to sites one day a week for half a day and kind of shadow a PA or a physician which was a nice refresher from the classroom. <laughs> so how would you describe a difficult day in the life or week in the life in your mm -hmm. first year? So waking up early, I had about a half hour drive to school, so um, it took me a bit longer to kind of get things going in the morning. Um, classes were kind of back to back um, all day, so maybe eight to like noon, and then we'd have an hour lunch break, which for me was pretty much spent studying while I was trying to get some food in me. Um, afternoon classes till five. I found I studied a lot better at school than at home. If I went home, it was very easy to get distracted and to do other things. So I would try to stay at school later into the evenings. Um, if I had stuff going on in the evenings like sports games, it helped because it would force me to stay downtown rather than to go back home. Um, so my day was, they were quite long. I was often out of the house from 7 a.m. till 9 p.m. or so. Mm -hmm. They're and long. On weekends, how did you utilize that time? Um, weekends, I would try to study at home. Again, didn't really work too much, so I would try to come into campus as well, which I found was helpful. Um, but I would also try to take breaks for myself. So, unless we had an exam on Monday, I would probably take Friday nights off uh, and just hang out with family and friends when I had the time. Um, Saturday, Sunday was if I didn't have an exam again, like easy enough, I guess, to break up, maybe a bit of studying, but then take the afternoon or evening off as well. So I really tried to balance that. Mm -hmm. And um, Manitoba is the only master's program uh, for PAs in Canada. Mm -hmm. So what distinguishes it is the four years of undergrad um, and then a capstone project. So what yes. is a capstone project? So with a master's program, you're required to do some type of research. So our capstone projects, um, are basically you get to choose an area that you're interested in. It can be a literature review or original research, uh, depending on what you think you have time for. Um, and you kind of pick an area, you find a supervisor for your uh, research project and work together to basically write a paper. 
um, you make a poster presentation and then there's a formal presentation at the end of the year um, that you present your research with. Now is this at the end of first year or second year? End of second year. So they, you can start working on it whenever. Um, a few people have started in first year. Uh, I found it very overwhelming first year so I didn't start really thinking about and working on my project until summer break after our exams. Uh, so I'm still kind of in the process of putting stuff together. I have my ideas, it's just getting everything in a row. So how is second year PA school different from first year? Um, I think it's a lot better in the sense you can kind of see what you're going to be doing rather than being buried under homework and studying. Um, it's long days still and there is still studying involved but it's a lot more clinical and things you're seeing in person um, so it's easier to kind of learn it that way I think. I also found I've, I learn a lot better by seeing something for the first time so I could have gone over a certain disease or something a hundred times in didactic year and then I see it in clinic once and it's completely solidified in my head so I think that was a big difference is the learning. How many clinical rotations do you do in second year? Um, I think it's nine. I might be give or take. Um, there is our core rotations that are required and then we get two electives to choose. And what are the rotations in? So I'm just going to go in order of what I have so I can remember them. So pediatrics, uh, which is ward medicine. Uh, community health, uh, so you usually go to a rural location um, and do a, a mix of different things. So I was up in Thompson, I had done a bit of clinic, I had some emergency med shifts, um, some internal shifts, and you could kind of make it what you want. So I also asked to go to Addictions Foundation Manitoba for a few days. Um, other people were up in Churchill and in um, Norway House, so there's you can kind of make it what you want. And then um, we have one in emergency medicine, surgery, psychiatry, um, obstetrics and gynecology, family medicine, um, and internal medicine. I think that covers all of them. And then my electives this year, uh, my first one I'm in right now is the pediatric ICU, and my second one is in cardiology. So what are the expectations of a, a clinical clerk or a second year PA student at a rotation? Um, definitely to be more hands-on to learn to get a feel for what it's like to take on a patient load, um, to present them, to come up with I, like plans for them, even if you're not right and you have no idea what the plan is, I think it's very important to still say something. If you're wrong, you'll learn from it. Um, and I think it's important too to make it clear to your preceptors what your um, expectations are for the rotation. So in my first elective that I'm in right now, uh, they had never had a PA student before, so when I had first walked in, my preceptor was like, okay, from what I understand, this is kind of a shadowing observer shift, right? Like, you're not taking patients. And I was like, no, I I'm supposed to take patients. It's more of a hands-on than a shadowing thing. So I think that I had to make that pretty clear in the beginning, um, but it's fine now. I'm taking patients and hopefully coming up with plans and expected to try that way, so. Mm -hmm. And um, the hours are almost like a full-time job, so what are yes. you doing after a day in clinic or on the ward? Um, the wards that I've done so far in pediatrics were very long days. Our, I think our first week there was like 90 hours. We had on-call shifts as well, so uh, we had a 24-hour on-call shift um, and then an evening call shift, so we would start at 7 a.m. and the evening call shifts would go right till 10 p.m. Uh, then you would go home, sleep for a couple hours, and come back the next morning for seven. And our 24-hour on-call shift was seven till seven the next day. Um, so ward, from what I found on the wards, it doesn't leave a lot of time to do anything really in the evenings. Um, my community health was more eight to five. Um, I'd have time in the evenings and the weekends, so I was able to do a lot more studying and kind of reading during that rotation. Um, and this one, uh, the. The rotation I'm on right now is also seven to five, so I have a bit more time in the evenings, I find. Mm -hmm. And you have a two-week elective right now in pediatric ICU. Yes. What do you enjoy about that rotation? Um, I think I've discovered about myself that I really enjoy pediatrics. Um, I also like kind of the acuity of care in, um, in the ICU that it offers. I found it's a very big learning curve. It's very specific um, patients with very complex problems. Uh, but it's kind of taught me how to think about them in a system-based approach, which is what they use in the ICU to present and um, discuss their patients. So 
I really enjoy, I guess, seeing myself be able to um, understand the complexity of these patients more and more each day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And how do you feel first year prepared for second year? Um, I think the ability to take a proper history and do a full physical exam that first year has taught us, they always kind of harped on how important that is and now you can really see it in second year by doing a thorough history and physical. You don't necessarily need to know what's going on right off the bat, but you're asking all the right questions and looking at all the right things on your exam that you can figure it out from what you've gathered. So I think that was huge in preparing us. Um, and critical thinking skills as well and coming up with plans on how to treat patients. I think everything in first year has helped us. And um, what has been your approach for learning procedures or prescribing medications? Um, so in terms of procedures, I haven't done a whole lot. When I was in community health, I got the opportunity to do a few skin biopsies, um, excisional biopsies and toenail removals, which were actually really um, satisfying. <laughs> uh, and it's a lot different than what we had practiced in procedure labs, obviously. Um, but I think whenever somebody asks if you want to try something, I I would never say no, even if I'm a little hesitant, I would maybe say like I've never done this before but I'd be happy to try it today and it's always worked out in my favor so I'm pretty happy about that. And on that note, how, how do you, how's your work-life balance or how do you prevent yourself from burning out? Um, in first year, it was, I think it's a little different for me in first year than second year so uh, I did take a lot of time for myself in first year. Uh, and at times I thought I was almost taking too much time, but I really needed that. Um, in the evenings if I was feeling stressed, like I, I would have to take time off and go outside, go for a walk, do something with family, um, and try not to feel guilty about that. I think also staying really involved with my sports always gave me something that I had to do each week, whether I wanted to or not. Like I would just go to it and even if I had an exam the next day, like I'd probably still go to a game just because it's a great way to, you know, kind of unwind. Um, in second year, I find it's easier to have a work-life balance and even the work part of it, like right now being so new, everything is still so exciting and fun to learn. So I could work a 24-hour shift and come home but not feel burnt out because it was such an exciting shift, you know, and you're like, you got to do so many cool things. So I haven't found uh, that part to be too stressful yet but that might come in a few years of working. <laughs> so how do you decompress after like a very stimulating, exciting day uh, where you worked long hours? Yeah, so when I was in the, um, my first few shifts in pediatrics were in the eMERGE, in the minor treatment area, and they would go till 11 o'clock and then I'd have to be up the next day at seven. And I know when I came home, it was right after a busy shift and I'd be trying to fall asleep, but I'd be going through every single case I saw and rethinking it. And it took me so long to fall asleep. So. I haven't really figured out a solution to that part yet. Um, uh, the same things kind of with the rotations I'm on right now, if something really exciting or interesting or heavy, I guess, happens at work, it does take me a bit to unwind. Um, but I think coming home and kind of doing something other than going to bed right away to take your mind off of it, whether it's reading or watching a show or something, would definitely help. <laughs> And now that you've uh, gone through the rigor of first year school, PA school mm -hmm. and you're in the midst of second year PA school, what kind of, what's an ideal PA student? Like who would do well in a program uh, like this? Um, I think somebody who isn't afraid to put themselves out there and kind of sell themselves. It's always a little bit weird promoting yourself to other people. It almost feels like you're bragging a bit or, you know, being a little too forward. But I think that's kind of the students who do the best are the outgoing ones who are saying, you know, let me try this and I have tr I've done this before in procedures lab, let me try it out in practice or something and just stepping up and making your voice heard and advocating for yourself. I think those ones would do the best. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a little bit about your role for Canada? Yeah, so I'm the student rep. So in our first year, there was a few positions that needed to be filled within the class, um, such as president, vice president, secretary. One of them was a student rep for Kappa. Uh, so I had taken that position. I was really interested in it. I wanted to become more involved with Kappa and kind of get more involved with advocacy for the profession and learn about it from I guess the board's view, um, but when I had signed up it was just a student rep, so each 
uh, each year from each program we'll have a student rep so the three programs two years each program there'll be six of us and we have phone meetings uh, every few months or so throughout the year where we discuss things uh, about what's going on in our programs um, we talk about National PA Day and what we're doing for that day um, we talk about student engagement sessions um, and then uh, also talking about how we can just kind of get students to interact a bit more through the programs. Uh, and then on top of that, so the Board of Directors has a student rep position to sit on the board. So it has to be a first year student. So there was three options. I had put my name forth and got that position. So I basically would sit in also on the board meetings, which were teleconferences over the phone and uh, participate in those meetings. It was, a lot of it when I first started out was topics and issues that I wasn't familiar with and didn't have a lot to add, but I had learned a lot about it, the kind of the profession and where our um, biggest issues are and the things we're working on, which was really interesting to, to hear from a student's side, I think. And then um, the conference here, so we had a full day board meeting yesterday where we discussed, you know, kind of strategies and planning and where the profession's going and what we're working on. So it was really interesting. Are you happy with your decision to pursue CA? 100%. Yeah, I feel it's in everyday life, you know, it can, it can be stressful, but then when you look back on it and think of how much you wanted, or personally for me, how much I wanted to be in this spot and how hard I worked for it, and like now I'm actually here, it's, it's exciting. Yeah, I'm very happy.